so we are going to do something a little bit different today it will be in the world of nfl and football um we are going to watch a video that is going to introduce to me who the most intimidating player in nfl history is i don't know who it is so um i'm curious to see who it is i just want to kind of jump into other types of little videos here and there you know i do my little miscellaneous videos um in the different sports like i did um like the Haka tribute in reference to rugby and I've done the um it, what is it football chance for soccer football that um and then now this one NFL football I want to take a look at who who the most intimidating player is so with that being said that's what I'm going to go ahead and do I don't know who it is you guys are probably like guessing or you know but with that being said I don't so let's go ahead and find out who so let's go all right here we go April 28th, 1981. The New York Giants first round selection, Lawrence Taylor, linebacker, North Carolina. Lawrence Little Taylor. did they know, he was gonna become the most dominant defensive player of all time. All right, so with that being said, hold on, because I'm gonna probably find out a lot of information about him, but I want to know just maybe a little bit of info on who he is. So Lawrence Taylor. Of course, we just seen who he was, but we'll go ahead and jump into this. Lawrence Julius Taylor, born February 4th, 1959. Nickname LT, former NFL player, of course, linebacker for the New York Giants, like the video just said. So we're going to jump right back into it. Don't worry. He's currently 59, born in Virginia. He's six foot three, 237 pounds, went to Lafayette High School in Virginia. College of North Carolina, 1981 drafted into the NFL. He's round one pick two to the New York Giants, 1981 to 1993. Played with that same team the entire time. What else do we have here? His highlights and awards. So he's um, 1999 Pro Bowl, Pro Football Hall of Fame inductee. His two-time Super Bowl champion, 10-time Pro Bowl, nine-time first all-team, um, all-pro, first-time second-team all-pro, NFL Most Valuable Player, the Burt Bell Award, three-time NFL Defensive Player of the Year, NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year, NFL Sacks Leader in 1986. The New York Giants number 56 was retired. And let's see, as far as his NFL statistics, he's had 1,089 tackles, 132.5 sacks, and nine interceptions. So I just kind of wanted to give a little bit of a glimpse because I, I had no clue who they were even going to show. So um, now I know exactly who he is and a little bit of information about him like I always do. Now we're going to jump back into Mr. Lawrence Taylor, the most intimidating player in the NFL. Ooh. <laughs> they make it all intense. The dude's career started off legendary. On his draft night, he claimed he drank 41 beers. That's insane. It had to be who can even, well, apparently he can. 41 beers? Oh my gosh. Crazy night on top of the fact that he didn't even play football until 11th grade. Maybe he and was now, nervous. He was the number two overall pick. What? The Saints who held the number There's people that have been playing since they were young, little, like groomed into it from birth into this, and he started in 11th grade. What? One pick said that they weren't going to take him and they decided to go with the cleaner player, which ironically ended up being a bad move. Mm. The Saints pick wasn't a bad player. He was actually pretty decent. He had a few thousand yard seasons, not too shabby, but he's not a Hall of Famer. Ooh, what a beast. Let alone the most dominant player of all time. Jeez. So Lawrence Taylor was a 3-4 outside linebacker. Mostly Ooh. specialized in rushing quarterback. He was bigger than most linebackers. Yeah. And faster than them, too. Look at it him. It didn't matter who offenses tried to block him with. He was either too what? quick, too powerful, or bold. Look at him. Teams changed their entire blocking schemes when they would play him. So this one time, Look at this. Buddy Ryan, who coached the Eagles at the time, that had to change the whole blocking scheme. That would Lawrence Taylor. And it worked perfectly. Oh. Well, that was the problem. Rule number one, don't piss off Lawrence Taylor. The next two plays ended with two sacks by Taylor and the quarterback, Ron Jaworski. <laughs> so you, you end up pissing him off and risk revenge. Hobbling around. Jaworski wow. over time feared LT. 
This poor dude had to face him twice a year. Jaworski said that he made sure he always knew where he was during the play, but wouldn't dare make eye contact. When LT was asked in an interview, did you ever make eye contact? He said, once. I weeped. <laughs> Lawrence Taylor knew he could get into the head of opposing players. They come to the line of scrimmage, and the first thing they do is start looking at me. I know, and they know. When they find me, they start screaming, 56 left, 56 left. It's like After everyone pay attention over, to 56. I come up to them and whisper, don't worry where I am. I will tell you when I get there. Not only was he a complete freak of nature physically, Mind game. but he just was insanely reckless and a hardcore partier. He would show up to practice reeking of booze, and to counteract the stench, he would down an entire bottle of scope. An entire bottle of mouthwash has got to be worse for you than the actual drinking itself. Ugh. One of the craziest things about this dude, he said starting his rookie year, he smoked an ounce of crack every single day. What? He would spend thousands of dollars every single day on it. To pass the drug test, he would have teammates give him urine samples, which, ironically, tested positive twice for two teammates giving him positive samples. There were times I'd be standing in the huddle. What? And instead of thinking what defense we were playing, I'd be thinking about play? smoking crack after the game. Well, like, well, you gotta understand, though, uh, it didn't affect my play. He wasn't lying. To start off his career, he, he went to excuse. 10 straight Pro Bowls, having seven seasons in a row with double-digit sacks, including 20 and a half sacks and the NFL MVP in 1986. Crack and cocaine didn't slow LT down. Well, neither did injuries, apparently. I made a video about how tough Jack Youngblood was. Oh my goodness. But this is pretty ridiculous as well. Playing against the New Orleans Saints, LT came off the edge. Like, but jugs are a no-go, period. And fell down, he brought his butt down this on his arm. Which ended up crazy a muscle in his shoulder. Clearly in a ton of pain, LT was not going to be denied the opportunity to play. What? Even if it meant playing with basically one arm. So the trainers strapped it up as best they could and sent him back out on the field. He would what? go on to have three sacks. What? Other than him grabbing his arm after plays, you can't even tell he's hurt. LT was just that much better than everyone on the field. You gotta be kidding me. While injured, torn, and you're One of the intangible still factors of a dominant team, especially dominating. defense, is intimidation. Jerry Sizemore, a former offensive tackle of the Eagles, in a New York Times article said, There were many sleepless nights. You played New York twice a year. Towards the middle of the week, something would just come over you and you'd just start sweating. My last year in the you league, feared opening day, coming to face he him? just looked at me and laughed. Right there, I thought I had to get out of this game. The dude ended up quitting after that season. What? In the same interview, he also said, quote, I'm glad that LT was on the left side and that I was on the right so I could play as long as I did. The last thing I gotta talk about is LT's most famous play. Even though I'm sure a lot of you have seen this, I'm just gonna say this now, discretion is advised. Oh. LT completely snapped the man's leg. Oh. One of the most gruesome injuries in NFL history. Could you just imagine being Joe Theismann's backup going in after that play? <laughs> right? This sort of thing is why <laughs> quarterbacks fear this dude so much. Former NFL defensive back Beasley Reese Ooh. pulled the New York. And he gets up and like barks at you. Quarterbacks look at Lawrence and forget the snap. Oh my. One opposing quarterback. And forget to under snap. Before the snap, unable to locate Taylor, out of fear, call the timeout rather than run the play. Don't Wait a minute. So because you didn't know where he was, you called a timeout because you you fear him that much. You gotta know where he is. Find Taylor standing on the sidelines. And he wasn't even in the game. Oh, <laughs> that is wild. Like that topped it all. Like you feared him that much. You called a timeout because you could not find him and wanted to know where he was and found out that he wasn't even on the field while you were panicking about to lose your mind. He wasn't even in there. Absolutely crazy. All the stuff that I've heard. He apparently was that intimidating, and that is just so crazy. Like, 
how much he can get in the mind of a player and have you unable to sleep, quitting something that you worked your life for and this is your career and you're done. You quit after that. Like, that is crazy. Lawrence Taylor, Lawrence, Lawrence, Lawrence. Oh my goodness. What a guy. Like, I would have loved to see him out there on the field right now, like, doing what he does and just tearing quarterbacks apart like that he broke his leg in half i wouldn't have loved to see that of course because broken bones are not fun but oh my goodness what a physical guy straight up beast tearing him down anyways i hope you guys like the video give the video a thumbs up i really enjoyed finding out who the most in intimidating nfl player was in history um make sure you guys check down in the description box below for my twitter for my Instagram, subscribe, hit the bell, you guys, and I'll see you guys next time.